it wasn't on the mass scale that a lot of us seem to envision. Things didn't just one day, you know, become bad. It just, it, it kind of was a long-term thing. The thing that really impacts this area, Arkansas, was we had some um, ecological problems. Climate problems, I guess, if you want to call it, for that short time period. You know, Oklahoma, the panhandle of Oklahoma, Texas, places like that, they're going to have issues with the dust bowl. Okay, the idea that we've over-utilized uh, the, uh, the ground, we've over-produced cotton mainly, we didn't rotate crops, things like that, so we created an ecological disaster. But in Arkansas, if you look through our history, from like 29 through the mid-30s, we have a couple of time periods to where we have major droughts that you can see to where you could walk actually under the bridge in Little Rock, the Arkansas River, where the train goes across. You could actually walk across that because the Arkansas River had dried up there. But you can also see major time periods where we had major floods. Eastern Arkansas, if you look at some of that, it's just major you know, disasters on, on crops and things like that. What it's going to end up causing is going to cause a lot of people to leave. You know, how many electoral votes does Arkansas have now? Six. Four congressmen, two senators, right? We used to have nine. Okay. Population, now the, the distribution of population in America was different, but we had nine during that time period, and we lost. The first group of people, they left and they go to California because the California didn't see the depression really as much as other places did. You know, we talked about Louisiana not seeing a lot of you know, depression era stuff because of the government ran by the Long family. But uh, a lot of people relocated to California, the Arkies. We see a lot of people relocating to California from Oklahoma, Okies. And again, a lot of times that was because of the Dust Bowl part. A lot of it was the idea that you're changing from a sharecropping system in the south, the farming system, to mechanized farms. There's a guy by the name of John Steinbeck, and John Steinbeck, he writes a book. And his book is called The Grapes of Wrath. And to me, The Grapes of Wrath is a really good depiction of the reason why people relocated to places like California. In his book, the family are called the Joad family, J-O-A-D. And the Joad family, they live in Cherokee County, um, around Salisaw, I think. Somewhere through there. And they relocate to California, the entire family. In route, they lose a couple of family members. And it just seems like the beginning of the book is the climax, and then it just goes downhill. You know, you think something can't get worse? Well, it does. But it really was a good, you know, gives you a good visual, you know, image of what it was like. And I wish that we had time for you to read it. Maybe when you're in like the 11th grade, we will. Yeah, they read it in the 11th grade. Um, anyway, great book. One of the other things that causes population in this area to leave actually will occur during the war. And that would be because people relocate to war factories. In America, we had a lot of war factories up around like Chicago, Detroit, the north, the Rust Belt, and they relocated there. So, you know, as far as population-wise, we are just now getting past that population that we used to have. Okay. Um, one of the topics that you also had um, was dealing with Hoover and Hoovervilles. Remember, President Hoover was in office when the Depression started. He didn't cause the Depression. You know, he just happened to be the one that seems to get a lot of blame for it. Remember, Hoover got his claim to fame for helping Belgium during World War I, helping the relief funds for Belgium. Okay. So, Hoover, when this depression starts, a lot of people who lost their homes, things like that, that were maybe professionals, because I would, um, I would probably think that the professional, the white-collar workers are the ones that are impacted the most from the depression. 
So a lot of that, those type of people became unemployed and sometimes became homeless. So they lived in um, shack towns, tents, things like that on the outskirts of the community. And the name given to those towns were called Hoovervilles. There's also something called a Hoover blanket. What's a Hoover blanket? A newspaper. Okay, you know, you didn't, you couldn't afford a blanket, so you wrapped up in a newspaper. Maybe laid on a park bench or something like that. Uh, there are also uh, Hoover taters. Hoover taters. And a Hoover tater is, a, is turnip. a turnip because turnips were cheaper to buy than potatoes. Can you imagine eating turnips mashed up instead of potatoes? I mean, that's not like people using cauliflower instead of potatoes and decide that's good for you. Um, okay. So Hoover gets, you know, a lot of blame. Franklin Roosevelt comes into, uh, comes into power, and right off the bat, Franklin Roosevelt did a couple of things. First of all, he's going to institute his alphabet soup, all these various programs that are going to provide relief and uh, reform, relief, recovery. That sort of thing. And he's going to come up with things like, like the Tennessee Valley Authority. The Tennessee Valley Authority uh, dealt with a lot of Appalachian uh, location uh, projects. And in that particular part of America, there's a lot of poor, extremely poor people that also deal with things like flooding. So they would dam up rivers and, you know, be dam projects and uh, people would build those and stuff and put people to work. You also had things like the CCC or the WPA, Works Progress Administration or um, Civilian Conservation Board, I think. CCC, yep. CCC. And they would go out and build things like schools, parks. Um, they would do bridges, just any sort of public project to put people to work. You know, art was one of the things that flourished during the uh, uh, the Depression. And are you taking notes, by the way, on that last page that says notes? You need to. Okay, if you're not, you need to. Okay, so you're going to create a slide that says notes. But a lot of times artists seem to flourish during this time period. People needed to make money. So if you had a talent for something, okay, you probably tried to sell it. Music actually seemed to thrive during this time period. And actually the music that really thrived was really upbeat because nobody wanted to be depressed. It was an escape. I like the movies. One of the things too is that the government itself funded a lot of projects in federal buildings for art. So they would bring in artists and they would do really neat stuff. There's examples of that actually at the uh, uh, Crystal Bridges. If you go through there and you look for Depression era artists, you can find some really neat stuff. Okay. One of the topics that you were supposed to have covered was the Wizard of Oz. And you're thinking, wow, on earth, he wants me to know the Wizard of Oz. Well, first of all, The Wizard of Oz was an extremely popular movie that comes out during the, uh, during the Depression. It was the first opportunity for people to see color. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at, uh, at The Wizard of Oz from the perspective of the writer. The writer was L. Frank Baum. L. Frank Baum. And he's writing about uh, an allegory, by the way. He's writing an allegory about the election of 1898. It's a good word to know, allegory. Allegory. You know, everything means something. Type stuff. It, you know, there's, all, there's a reference to something. Okay. So, let's take the story. Character by character, event by event. And we'll dissect it. Okay. First of all, we have Dorothy, right? Okay, we have Dorothy. Dorothy is going to represent the average citizen of the Midwest. Remember, she's from Kansas. Probably an agricultural family, which you know that anyway. 
she lived on a farm, right? Okay, so Dorothy, she represents the average person. Okay, Dorothy, she's caught up in something. What is she caught up in? A tornado, twister, a whirlwind. And the whirlwind that, that she's caught up in is the election of 1898 and the problems with the election. So you typing that in? The world win election. There were lots of controversies with this particular election. And we'll get into those in just a second. Okay, she's caught up. She's spinning around. She's in the house. Boom! What does she land on? A witch. A witch. witch wicked witch of the west. The west. The west. The west. What? Nope. It was the east. The west. Oh, yeah, east. The west. The west. The west. Actually, actually, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter east or west. Because what she's representing is she's representing banks. You listening? She's representing banks. Did you write it? It was the West. The Wicked Witch of the West is. Yes, that's the one that's. She's the one that gets water for her. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's really oh, I'm talking about the one that gets killed in the beginning. Okay, so. Uh -huh. Is it Dorothy representing the banks or is it the witch? The witch represents the banks. Are you still talking, girl? No. Okay. So, lands on the witch. Where are they at? That one place where all the munchkins are. All the mun munchkin land? Okay, first off, let's type the munchkins. <laughs> Okay, the munchkins represented workers. Okay, first of all, they're short, they're little, they're insignificant. They are also part of unions. Because remember, it's like the Lollipop League and the something guild and something else, and they're all unions. Various trade unions. That in this particular instance didn't really have much of a bite. Okay, weren't real powerful. Glinda, the good witch, okay, Glinda the good witch in the book, in the movie, she's the good witch of the north, but in the book, she's the south. Right. Okay, she's the south, and the south would actually, if the south could get their act together, okay, could have been much more powerful and got a lot of things done, but the south was still disorganized. didn't seem to be as powerful as the as say the banking witches. Now, the first thing that happens is Glenda puts something on Dorothy. What is she? Shoes. She puts on her guys, she puts slippers on her or shoes. In the movie, they're ruby because ruby looked really good, but they're really not ruby in the book. They're silver. They're silver and what are they going to walk on? The yellow brick road. Here's the tie into both of those, gold and silver. The issue in the election of 1898 was what are we going to, to base our currency on? Is it going to be based on silver? Is it going to be based on gold? Okay. Or greenback, the, the, uh, the money. In the book, the idea that the silver slippers will take you where you need to go should be putting in your head that the author is thinking that silver is the right way. That silver would be the currency to follow. But that gold is laying the way to where? To, to the Emerald City. Remember, you're living in Oz. Oz is OZ, right? What's the abbreviation OZ for? Ozone? Ounces. Ounces of gold or silver. I'm stupid. So Oz represents ounces of gold and silver. It's fine. Okay. Now, she's on her way to the Emerald City. Emerald City is Washington, D.C. Okay. It's all paid with, with money. Okay. Are you taking notes? Are you taking notes? Oz is Washington, D.C. It's Emerald City. 
uh, because of dollars or greenbacks. Okay, so Dorothy, she decides she's going to have to go to Emerald City and she's going to talk to the Wizard of Oz. And who would be the Wizard of Oz? Who's in control of Washington, D.C.? The president. The president. Okay, so the president. So she, she grabs Toto, which Toto represents actually the media because it barks, barks a lot. The media barked a lot, newspapers barked a lot. Didn't really get a lot done. Okay. Grabs Toto, she takes off. And she's off to see the wizard, the wonderful oh, wizard of Oz. Yeah. And then comes in contact with who? The, 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 the scarecrow. Oh, the yeah. scarecrow is first. And the scarecrow represents, first of all, farmers. Secondly, it represents the Grange. The Grange, G-R-A-N-G-E. And the Grange is a farmer's union. Okay, now think about what he was in search of. He was in search of a brain. The implication is that farmers didn't have enough sense to figure out what they were doing. First of all, remember farmers, they're growing crops to feed us, so you would think that their, their livelihood or the fact that they own farms would be more uh, thought of you know, than some other industries. They could have manipulated the farming to where they were actually maybe getting more money and more prestige. The Grange also didn't have any sort of power. You know, it was a union that really never took off really well. So he needed a brain. So Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, they take off. So they're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. And they come in contact with who? Tin Man. The Tin Man represents industry. So they represent factories or industry. Fletcher, you already heard this story, haven't you? Didn't you do? Were you in classical theater? We did that. But um, so the Tin Man, he represents industry or, or factories. And what's he in search of? A heart. He had no heart. Business had no heart. Okay. Business is after business is out for business. Okay. I think business is still that way. The Lorax brings that. Okay. So, Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, they're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. And they come in contact with who? The Cowardly Lion. The Cowardly Lion. The Cowardly Lion is, his name is William Jennings Bryan. What? His name is William Jennings Bryan. And he is the Democratic candidate for president. William Jennings Bryan. Jennings Bryan. Okay. William Jennings Bryan. And he's in, he's the Democratic candidate for president. Now, he is the Democratic candidate for president multiple times. I'm going to say it's like four times. Yeah. And he's, remember that the cowardly lion, you know, he's in search of courage. He's got a loud roar sometimes. He would always be a great speaker, but he had he had no courage. He had no, he, he was the type of guy that when he ran for office, he ran on the same campaign tactics. Okay, and he just never seemed to get anywhere with it. You know, the Democrats would nominate him, and then he would fizzle out. Okay. Okay, so, you, um, you have William Jennings Bryan. So, now they're off. All of them are off to see the wizard. So, they're going through, and they come in contact with a couple of things that are, that are kind of interesting. Okay. They, they come in contact with... Um, Let's say the, the um, flying monkeys. The flying monkeys supposedly, and this kind of a loose one on that one, um, but they supposedly represent the Native American population in America at that time because they could be convinced to do just about anything. Okay. Another thing that they come in contact with, do you remember the horse? Oh, the color changing horse. The, yeah, the horse of a different color. Yep. That's a politician. 
That's a politician. A politician will tell you anything you want to hear. Okay, so a politician will tell you everything you want to hear. Sometimes we were debating earlier. The uh, are you still talking, girls? No. Actually, you don't have to answer. It's just your mouth closed. <laughs> The, uh, remember the poppy fields where they all fall asleep? We were talking about it and we were looking at it from the perspective of, uh, you know, like the opium war or the idea that a lot of people used heroin you know, that are, that's made from poppies. So we, we don't quite know about that one or whatever, but it was kind of a good one to, to add in there. Um, okay, but they're going along and they're trying to get, you know, all these things from the Wizard of Oz. Okay. What happens to the witch? She is melts because of what? Water. 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 Think about what a farmer needs. Water. water. They were having a drought. They were having a drought. The bankers <laughs> wouldn't be coming out after you if you grew your crops like you had planned to. Okay. So water solved the drought, which would solve the problems with the banks. Okay. So the idea that the wicked witch of the West dies because of water being thrown on her is symbolic to the drought. La 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 story ends. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it's just a, uh, as far as the movie goes, it was an amazing movie that came out. Okay, the, the music, the color, the um, uh, you know, people just everything that Judy Garland could do. Oh my gosh, they were, you know, they just thought she was a star child. And um, remember, Hollywood was a whole lot, I would say, even much more popular back then than it is even today. And today's real popular. But uh, people thought of them like godlike status. Anyway, um, any more topics that I need to go over? I don't know what, you know, I have students that, like the, the trees that are growing like apples, things like that. I don't know, other than, you know, you might possibly have, you, know, you want to throw in the uh, apple industry of Washington State or Michigan. You can, you can come up with things for it. Any other topics and notes I need to mention? Okay, this is what I need you to do. I need you to think about the next few weeks. The next few weeks, well, the, till the end of school, you have to get yourself up to an 80% or better in this class for the semester. Okay, because 80% is what uh, Mr. Rollins is looking for. Most of you are past it already. Some of you are real close to doing that, and there's a couple of you that need to really work hard. Okay, so you know where you're at. You need to go in and do all of these PowerPoints that we've assigned you with the various topics and get them done and over with. That way you can focus on subjects that you need to deal with. Realize that we have more geography tests that are coming up. You have the um, like Australia, New Zealand region, you've got Africa, you've got Central America, and you've got South America still to go with, with uh, capitals and countries. So you still have that. But you can get through with the PowerPoints over the 40s, the 50s, 60s, 70s, real easy. Get it done, get it over with, focus on something else. When I look at you, or when I talk to you, especially those of you that, that we dealt with, with uh, parent-teacher conferences, your science grades are usually your lowest. Some of you, it's English, math. It's not social studies. How many of you social studies is your best grade? So you keep it there. You know, get it above that 80% mark. Maintain that, but focus on some of these other things. It's my understanding that if you have your averages above an 80%, then the last week of school, you won't have to attend. Now, I don't know that for sure. Don't hold me to it, but that's what I have been told. Yeah. Huh? I suppose so. I suppose. 
but you can go ahead and get your stuff done for social studies and get it over with. Jabron, probably you are. What, what are you on now? Aren't you probably finished? Don't you finish with everything fast? So, you know, and here's the thing with those PowerPoints that you're doing, it probably wouldn't take you a day to get them all done. Just don't be lazy about it, forget. Or do something called submit. Why don't you now, right now, for the 1930s, submit. So submit what you did, especially with that extra page you did on notes. Submit it right now. Do not walk out of this room this morning without hitting submit. Because the, I'm telling you, a lot of you like to walk right out the door and never look at it again. And then when we record that zero, you're like, oh my gosh, I got a zero on you know the 1930s. I know I did it. Submit it. So the rest of the class, what time you have left, use your time appropriately.